What's up all my movie loving maniacs, this is your boy Bang Phobia of the Last of the Factor and I am here to review Venom The Last Dance which is the third and supposed final film of this Tom Hardy Venom trilogy so let's review. Venom The Last Dance picks up sometime after the events of the first film, Eddie and Venom are still on the run from the authorities and the government. A threat from another world is out to get Venom so he sends a bunch of creatures to get Venom and the movie just ends up being one long road trip for Eddie and Venom to get to point A to point B. Now if you've seen my video, my complicated relationship with the Venom movies, if you haven't check it out but if you have seen it you know how I feel about this movie prior to seeing it. I just feel like these movies are a waste of potential that you either like or just downright don't like. Both Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage have their moments. I do like Let There Be Carnage more than the first film, admittedly, but that's because I always wanted to see both Venom and Carnage on the screen. Outside of that, a world where we have a spider man -less Venom, and that first movie being the catalyst of why we even got all these spider man -less spin spinoff movies. I just never really care for these movies and I just feel like this is Sony just milking the Spider-Man brand for every penny that they can get, whether it diminishes the brand or not. Plus Spider-Man is one of the few franchises Sony owns or at the very least have the rights to that can easily print money for them. So of course they're going to do everything they can to still hold on to this character and everything that comes with him before the rights revert back to Marvel. Whenever that happens, I hope to God that happens one day. That being said, I'm at a point where I just accept these movies for what they are. And how did I feel after seeing this movie? Well, the same way I felt when I saw the first two movies for the first time. It's a movie that will mildly entertain me while I'm watching, but will ultimately piss me off and annoy me the more I stop to think about it for more than 30 seconds. Though I do think the movie did do some things that improved upon the first film, or at the very least the last film. But at this point now, we're three movies deep, so it just feels too little too late. It didn't feel genuinely earned, at least in my eyes. This time around, Caleb Marcel steps in the director's chair and is also the writer of the first two films. Now, I mentioned that this movie is just one long road trip and I really do mean that. But for what it's worth, I did feel like the movie basically did feel like a road trip movie from the filmmaking standpoint. The relationship between Eddie and Venom is here front and center. They still got that symbiotic relationship and I do feel like it's even more symbiotic but Again, we're three movies deep now, so it just feels like you're more desynthesized to their relationship and know what to expect. And even through them, it does feel like it because they do have that relationship where they do care for each other. And Tom Hardy, at this point, he could definitely play this role in his sleep. He just clocks in and worked. Now, like I said, these monster henchmen are sent to go get Eddie and Venom because Venom is somehow a beacon for something that can unleash their boss and honestly there really isn't no villain in this movie like everybody's just out to get Eddie and Venom they are just the more threatening villains because these are just faceless creatures which really doesn't add anything but and not really spoiler alert because everybody's been talking about this in their reviews and I think it's even in some of the trailers but you have Noel in this movie and apparently he's played by Andy Serkis which I did not know about but no he's not in this movie as much and they don't do anything with him at the very end. He's just there to sit and bark orders and you would think he'd be the more bigger threat but it's just they don't do nothing with him. Clearly he's there just to set up something either that's within the context of these movies or somewhere else in the spider-verse who knows i don't know but i don't even care after seeing his appearance in this movie quick side note you do get the scene that we saw in the trailer where venom he attaches himself to a horse and now we have a venom horse and it doesn't just stop there he goes on to other animals one of them is an animal i have a phobia of so that definitely made me jump and squeal in my chair but they could have done so much with the idea of putting the symbiote with other animals and they just don't do nothing with it. Except for not to spoil anything, it's something they do with it at the end. It's like, yeah, see, this is what we could have did. We just wanted to show you. It'd be fun, right? What if we did this? What if we did that? Some new players within this movie is Chuatel Ejiofor, Juno Temple, and Reese Afans. Chuatel Ejiofor and Juno Temple play this soldier and a doctor that are 
part of this Area 51 kind of place. Well, it's below Area 51. It's called Area 55. So what the fuck happened to Area 52, 3, and 4? Don't know. Either way, I will say the whole Area 55 portions of this movie was a little bit more interesting than everything with Eddie and Venom at times. But still, Chiwetel Ejiofor and Juno Temple are really given nothing that they can sink their teeth into, though it does feel like there are more competent actors that are just elevating this slightly a little bit, but it doesn't save the movie. And that's also not a knock at Tom Hardy, I think he's also an excellent actor, but at this point he knows what kind of movie he's making. They give Juno Temple's character some backstory that really doesn't go nowhere. Now, I'll admit, I was a little bit worried about what they would do with Chiwetel Ejiofor in this movie because he plays Mortal in the Doctor Strange movies and is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And now we're here in this whatever Spider-Verse we're in. And I don't know whether or not they was going to do something with that connection, but it turns out they don't. And the only reason I feel that way, and maybe this is a bit of a stretch, but... As we all know, Chiwetel Ejiofor, he is a British man, and his character Mordor is also British. And then we see him in this movie, he has an American accent, so I'm like, okay, that's a good way to differentiate itself. I don't know, maybe I'm just stretching here, but it's just a thought. The same can be said for Reese Afons, who we all know played Dr. Connors, aka the Lizard, in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. But here he plays a hippie with a family and he also has an American accent and he takes his family on this road trip so that they can see Area 51 before it gets demolished. I'll also say he's another actor that is elevating the material that he is given. In fact, more than Chiwetel Ejiofor than General Temple at times. But I surprisingly did like everything with the family and when Eddie and Venom, they spend some time with them, it kind of humanizes the both of them. And I know some people are probably thinking they just shoehorning a family in here like they did with the family in the Theatrical Color Justice League, to which I slightly disagree because in that family, it does feel like they were just shoehorned in here. Whereas with here, we actually spend some time with this family so that when shit does hit the fan and the family is in some kind of danger, we actually care for them. Some returning players include Stephen Graham, who plays Mulligan, and I'm not going to spoil much about his character, but let's just say they don't do much with his movie, he's just relegated to exposition dump at times. They do something else with this character, but again, I'm going to let you see for yourself if you decide to go see this movie. Mrs. Chan returns in a hilarious but pointless bit where Eddie and Venom end up in Vegas. And honestly, this whole bit where they're in Vegas, it all boils down to three things. One, just so we can have some time with a fan favorite character from the previous two movies. Two, for Eddie and Venom to get into some Vegas shenanigans. And three, for Eddie and Venom to transition into the final act of the movie. And I'll even admit, I did like the final act of the movie, which is basically the final battle. I did feel like there were some emotional stakes at times, at least between certain characters. Plus the action during the final act, it was fun to watch. Because for the most part, it's just one big symbiote battle. But unlike the first movie, I can actually see and understand what the fuck is going on. Now the movie does have the audacity to have a montage of Eddie and Venom's greatest hits from the first two movies. But I'm just like, fuck you, you didn't earn this. And in case you're wondering, yes, there are two end credit scenes. One, you could make the argument that you could stay and watch because it could possibly set up other things for future movies, whether that's with Marvel or Sony, who knows, but it's not the end of the world if you don't sit through it. But that second one, it took a long time to get to, but that second one, yeah, you could just leave after you watch that first one. In the end, if you like the first two Venom movies, chances are you'll get a kick out of this. If you didn't like the first two Venom movies, then this movie isn't going to do anything to change your mind. And if you feel like you are the latter, but at the same time, you just accept these movies for what they are, at best, just wait till it hits streaming or rent it. There are things I like about the movie, and then there are things that I didn't like about the movie, and that's why I'm going to give this movie the same rating I gave the first two films. I'm going to give Venom, The Last Dance, the shoulder shrug emoji. Thank you so much for watching. Have you seen Venom, The Last Dance? If so, let me know what you think of the movie in the comments section below. This your boy, Bankful B of The Last of the Factor. Stay safe, wash your hands, and until next time, we are, we are Venom! We are Venom! No. Oh. Yeah, we are.
Oh, you think this is a joke? You think this is a sitcom?